Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this episode I show you how to fake a very expensive lens with Photoshop. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Ramelli, I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful, the romantic city of Paris, France and the very sunny city of Los Angeles, California and I travel the world to do some photos and share some tips and tricks with you guys. Now, if you want to get the raw file of this episode, this is going to be a cool background and it's going to be some cool light effects for free and also get access to hundreds and hundreds of free raw files, Lightroom presets, Photoshop brushes. All you have to do is subscribe to my daily newsletter. For this, you just sign up on my website, you put in your email address. Once you put in your email address, you log in. And also there is something new. When you log in, you're going to get access to some really cool offers from Adobe. You can get up to 20% on the Creative Cloud photography, that is Lightroom and Photoshop. And you can also get up to 15% off on the full Creative Cloud. And that is only if you subscribe to my newsletter and if you're logged in. All right, without any further ado, let me show you how you can use Photoshop to fake a very expensive lens. All right, so this is the final image we're going to go for. I'm not going to go through every detail of it because it's a bit too long, but I want to show you a really important trick, two important tricks, in fact. But first, um, if you go to my website, photosearch.com, and you create an account, if you have created an account, you see I'm logged into the website, and you will only see that if you're logged in. So you have to create an account to my daily newsletter. If you click on my gear, there you will see a, a banner that only people who is part of the photo search community can see. And if you click here, you can get the Creative Clouds uh, from Adobe. So it's the Creative Cloud Photography minus 20%. So it is Lightroom and Photoshop. Uh, Lightroom you can buy as a standalone, but Photoshop you cannot. And you get both of them for $7.99 instead of $9.99. It's pretty crazy. All right. So let's jump over to Photoshop and I want to show you this little trick. This is a, a portrait that I took of a friend, an actress I worked with on a, on a movie we shot in October. She's actually the lead uh, of the movie. And I wanted to show you, because uh, I really like the result and it was a couple of things I found along the, the way that I wanted to share with you. So it's a very uh, simple image. Basically, if you start from the top here, you have a light leak there. Actually, this light leak you will find as part of the Wedding Photographer Toolkit Bundle that you find in the, in the tutorial section. You click on Photoshop, and this is what I've been using. There is a lot of uh, light effects you can get in this bundle. But I'm going to give you this one for free. This one that I'm using now is just a simple light leak that was put into screen mode. When you put anything in screen mode, let me show you in normal mode, this is how it looks like. Uh, when you put something in screen mode, what happens is that anything which is black uh, becomes uh, disappears and you, we only get the light. So I'm going to take that off. Um, it's a smart object. That's why you, uh, I did a little Gaussian blur on it. You can, you know, I put the light leak and I did a little Gaussian blur on it. But that's not the trick I want to show you. That's a photo filter to make her skin a bit more yellow so that it fits with the background. That is her. Uh, with a mask. I did a, a, a pretty good mask. It was, uh, she was a bit hard to extract. Uh, and this is the background. On the background is a smart object. So a smart object, the way it works is you can apply different filters to it and you can change them afterwards. So here is a filter called Blur Gallery. If I take this off, this is how the original image looks like. Okay. Now, what I used to do in the past to make like a blurry background would be to go into Filters, Blur, Gaussian blur, okay? But if you do that, uh, you see, let me show you the difference. If you do that, the blur is completely different from the one we had before. Let me pull up the history so you can see. Uh, this is the blur. You see how that blur has got like little bokeh effect? This is a blur that looks like it was made with like an 85, uh, you know, 1.4 sort of lens with a very small depth of field. This kind of blur is like a complete digital, uh, electronic, un unrealistic blur. So how do you get this blur? Well, let me show you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it out, actually. Uh, I'm going to take it out and I'm going to put it back in. So you go to Filter, Blur Gallery and not Blur, and you go to the Field Blur. Okay, th that, that is a new blur that came 
with uh, Photoshop CC, if I remember well. And it's really meant to uh, uh, imitate the, the depth of field you get with a camera. So there is one big thing here, which is the blur. If you go on the right, uh, basically you can make it more blur. Now, when you shoot a portrait like I did, where she is almost, um, you know, standing completely her body, it's almost a full body portrait, you shouldn't go too far because this is the kind of blur you would get uh, on a, you know, close up, you know, or like a waist to a head sort of shot. And this is what you would get like with just a close up on head. You see, more you zoom in on somebody with a lens, more the blur background is more blurry. Okay, so here, this is kind of the blur you would get probably with an 85.4 if you had this in the background. However, they added these two really cool options. One is called light bokeh and this one is called color bokeh. So light bokeh, I'm going to do it too much. You can see what it does. It just adds this little light uh, spot there and you can make it a little bigger if you want. I think I made it a bit like this. And, uh, but I, I'm not going to make the bokeh so strong. I don't, want the, don't, I don't want them to be burned, but I want a little bit of bokeh there. See, if I take it out completely, there's no bokeh. And the bokeh is just sort of like little bubbles of light, circles of light. And then you got the color bokeh where you can add color in your bokeh. I'm going to do it on the screen. I'm going to add a little bit of color, something like that, and bring down the bokeh. I think it's a little too strong. But this is more a realistic background that you would get with you know going out of focus on an 85.4 so that's something that i think is a cool effect and then you just put somebody that you extracted on top of it now she doesn't look like she's belonging there because uh, it's very yellow in the back and she's pretty white she's warm but not warm enough so what i did is i added a photo filter uh, let me do it from scratch so you can see all i do is you go here and you go to photo filters and by default, you got like a warm filter. Now, because the image was very yellow, what I did is I choose a yellow filter. And I just added a bit of yellow on her skin so it would match up everything. But to create the illusion even more that she's there, this is when I, I take one of these uh, light leaks you get in, uh, in the flares and glows and light leaks you get in the wedding kit that I'm offering on my website. And uh, if I'm going to put a link to a video. I show you how I use that. I created different libraries here. I used a new library module, which is amazing in Photoshop CC 2015, where I have like, you know, uh, this is like lasers that I have for weddings, uh, bokeh and licks. I have different type of bokehs, uh, flares and glows, and I can just drag and drop them and they, they are immediately, uh, you know, let me actually take this one out so you can see they are immediately smart objects. I can just take one and I drag and drop it. I put it over her. Okay, uh, it's, it's a smart object. So I'm gonna put it into um, screen mode as I showed you. Okay, but it's too strong and it's too, I don't like how this is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to filter. Oh, I'm gonna press enter first. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to filter, uh, blur. And this time I'm gonna go on Gaussian blur and I'm gonna make this very blurry because I don't want people to see the rays of light. I just like the light itself. So before, after before after it really shows that she's there it also makes a little high key portrait and voila i thought i would share this to you now if you're not familiar with photoshop and you want to learn photoshop well you can go to my tutorials and i have one tutorial which is almost a, my bestseller bestseller which is photoshop for photographer uh, photoshop for photographer is like a five hours course and it really takes into account that you don't know photoshop and I'm going to try to, we first go into camera rows and then we're doing like sky replacement, HDR, digital blending, uh, black and white. And then we finish off with some, uh, you know, some real composite where I extract this man, I take these clouds, I take this panorama and I make this composition at the end. Uh, so this, the purpose of Photoshop for photographer is like, oh, I want to learn Photoshop or uh, I kind of know a few things about Photoshop. Well, there you have it. This is what it's for. Anyway, I'm gonna give you for free a couple of light leaks, and I'm gonna give you for free also this, this background so you can play around and put it in your portraits. I'm not gonna give you uh, the model because it's copyrighted, but I'm gonna give you the background and the light leaks, and you can play around, take somebody that you love, extract her, you know, put her on the background. Just make sure if you do that, that her, uh, the light that she has uh, is not too dramatic. 
this kind of lighting is uh, is not so dramatic. You know, the sun was a kind of uh, a bit everywhere, but it was very diffused. It's a very diffused lighting. So there's no, uh, I don't think this photo would work as much if she had, had like very hard shadows on her face. But give it a try. Try this background. Try this foreground element. You know, put it like a sandwich between the person you extracted and, you know, and hashtag photo search review on it so I can see it on Instagram. And that'd be a fun project. Voilà, mesdames et messieurs. Hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in another episode.